Hi, this is a lecture on quantum numbers. Let's begin right away. It's a very long video, not in terms of time, but in terms of detail. It's, the slides are going to go very quickly. It has many, many slides. I won't even tell you because uh, it might discourage you from even watching it. But let's begin right away. And this is going to be very helpful in how to determine quantum numbers for a particular space on the periodic table. We're going to use blank periodic tables. So let's begin. N quantum number is the principal quantum number and it denotes the main energy levels or the main shells. The main distribution of electrons around the nucleus. In the Bohr model you have distances away from the nucleus that electrons are orbiting. Uh, for instance, level 1 can hold 2 electrons, level 2 can hold 8 electrons, level 3 can hold 18 electrons uh, from the equation 2n squared. And you can have a 7p or a 7s where that 7 is the principal quantum number 7. You can have 4p where the principal quantum number is 4. So you can have a variety of uh, choices for that principal quantum number, one, two, three, four, are just a few of them. You can have many more than that. The, uh, the capacity, again, of each particular uh, energy level will be 2n squared. So there are 32 elements, electrons, distributed in shell 4, but the, some of the other levels, such as 6 or 7, uh, could hold even more atoms. For instance, there's only um, 6s, 6d, and 6p for the sixth energy level. Now the next uh, quantum number is going to be the L, and that's the shape. The shape quantum number is the suborbital. Each suborbital, or actually subshell, has a sh has a shape. And I'm going to I'm going to detail those shapes in a moment, and it is the shapes of the individual orbitals that make up the subshells that give rise to the term shape quantum number L. Shape quantum number L. The, the shape quantum number is exactly that. It is the shape that the electrons form in their orbit around the nucleus. Now, there are four shapes or four subshells. S is equal to zero because it has to be a number. P is one, D is two, and F would be zero, one, two, three. Now, the shapes of the orbitals, each, each subshell has a shape and that's created by the individual orbitals that are part of that subshell. Where S only has one orbital, the subshell structure is going to be spherical. And that's it. So two electrons can fit in there. Now we're going to look at the individual orbitals for the P subshell. The P subshell has three P orbitals. Each of the orbitals actually looks the same. They're kind of dumbbell shaped. They are mutually perpendicular to each other. You have the px, the py, and then the third dimension we'll call pz. If you're writing a Cartesian coordinate system on the board x and y, then coming straight out of the board would be the axis z. So you have py and z, those are the three dimensions. So that is what we'll call the third dimension is z, pz. Now when you look at the other subshells such as D and F, there's a little bit more variation among the individual orbitals that make up the subshell. But for the P, they, the three orbitals look the same. Make no mistake about it. In each orbital you can put two electrons. Each orbital you put two electrons. Those electrons are going to have opposite spins. Now, what is the principle or rule that allows you to only put two electrons in each of the orbitals? This particular slide 
talks a little bit about probability, and you'll hear the words word probability used often with the distribution of electrons. Probability simply means what is the likelihood of finding an electron? Well, it seems almost silly to think about it that way because if you say, well, in the green area, the wide green node up top, the vertical node, of course that's going to be high probability. And the low one, the low probability would be out on the horizontal axis. Well, that makes perfect sense. So when it says there is very low probability of finding an electron in this direction, of course. But the electrons are all over the place. But the highest density of those electron clouds, that fan propeller that makes that shadow of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an electron, is, is going to be the highest probability of finding the electron. But yeah, maybe I could find an electron out where it's low probability, but when they'll use the word probability often. And it just simply says that if I have a vertical uh, P, a PY, then the odds are, the probability is that I will find an electron, a high probability of finding an electron uh, in the vertical orientation. So that's all that means. And the next slide, I'm going to show you, if I take all the P's and I put them together, what does the actual subshell look like? So this is the visualization of all three orbitals in the P subshell uh, together. And you can see that they are all mutually perpendicular to one another. The PX, the PY, and the PZ. So this is called the P subshell, the collection of the three orbitals. Here are the five D suborbitals, uh, subshell orbitals. And you'll see that they are named uh, YX, X squared, XY, XZ, and X squared, XY. So they're kind of weird looking, but each of these orbitals will contain two electrons. And it's the higher state of energy or the different state of energy which makes these orbitals those particular shapes. Now what I'll show you are the seven uh, F orbitals that are part of the F subshell. This is going to be negative three. Do you see the electron on the far left? So this particular one the shape is specific to, to negative 3 in terms of its orientation. M is magnetic or orientation. It could be labeled M or O, orientation. This would be negative 2. That's the shape for that. Then negative 1. You can see how the shapes are similar. But this one is a little funky looking. Kind of cool. It looks like it has two collars on a P subshell. And then this is going to be positive 1. Then next would be positive 2. Again, those look very similar. And then plus 3. Okay? Now, then what I'll do is I will, I will put them together. And they are like that. Very simple. Those are all 7 uh, orbitals on the same uh, page so that you can compare them together. So now what we'll do is we'll go on to the M or magnetic or you could call it O but it's actually M. The orientation or the magnetic quantum number is based on the orientation in space. For instance P has three PX, PY, and PZ that we saw. And we also saw that with F and D as well based on the three dimensions. So what we'll do is <clears throat> we'll play this quickly We'll build the model for the orbital structure for each sublevel using spheres, or in this case, just simply two dimensions, uh, circles. And then we'll put the uh, we'll put the numbers at the bottom of the number line. So the first one we have is S, and we'll number those down, and we'll make this uh, go a little bit more quickly. And uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, let me change the timing on this. Uh, I'll be right back. You'll never know I was gone. 
You see that? You never knew I was gone. Amazing. Elect electrons. How they behave. Okay, let's go quickly. So then you have the P. And then next will become D. All right. There's D. D. You're going to have five suborbitals with D, of course. And uh, I'll be quiet as it plays through. And I'll come back in a moment. Have fun. And you can see how the number line is being put in, and those are orient its orientations. Now, what you could do is you could be very amazing and make a poster and put in the each what each sublevel, what each orbital in the subshell looks like. That would be pretty amazing. And you could make a giant poster containing that. First one to come up with uh, a volunteered hand, I'll give a lot of extra credit for a poster with those orbitals on it, possibly if you draw it yourself, that sort of thing. So I'd need somebody with some artistry, uh, creativity, uh, talent for that. <clears throat> All right, come and see me. First one to come and see me, uh, I will uh, consider very carefully. All right, now this is the S, and uh, that's negative one-half and positive one-half. So we agree as a class that the first electron, so in other words, if you're evaluating the shell after everything is done, if there's one electron in there, that last electron that you put in, if it's alone, then it's plus one half, and if it's paired up with something, it would be negative one half. That's what we agree on. So uh, that's very important to understand. I will hold you responsible for exactly that. Now what we'll do is we'll quickly review what we just did with all of the options for the quantum numbers. You'll remember n starts with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. For instance, 7s2, the principal quantum number would be 7. And then, uh, so he, these are the various options. Why don't we change the timing on this very quickly? Again, you'll never know I was gone. Aha, you never knew I was gone. So n is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then L will be uh, S equals 0, and then P equals 1, D equals 2, F equals 3, and then the 4, the 7 possibilities for M, and then the 2 for S. Now what we'll do is we'll look at a little chart, and that's where you're going to put the answers to the following problems that we'll do slowly, very slowly, to find the quantum numbers. The first quantum number we're going to find is n. You put it in the le upper left-hand corner, and then l, the shape, in the upper right-hand corner, and then m uh, is in the, the magnetic, will be in the lower left-hand corner, and then you guess that s will be in the lower right-hand corner. <clears throat> so let's begin right away. We're going to do a bunch of problems that I have listed on the periodic table. You see that there's a through j. So for those positions, I want to find the first, the four quantum numbers. Now remember, the first quantum number, we're going to do A first, will be uh, N. So to find N, we want to find NLX. But remember, we're trying to find N. We're trying to find the principal quantum number. We're, we're doing the NLX slowly, but indeed we're trying to find the principal quantum number. So the first thing you're going to do is find NLX. So to find NLX, you've got to look at the position of A. Well, the position of A is going to be in the fourth. The first time you see an S is in the fourth shell. So it's going to be 4S1. So in order to come up with 4S1, uh, I've got to go through this kind of rigmarole, uh, knowing fully well that when I find NLX, 4 is going to be the principal quantum number. Now, you'll notice that there are four sections to the periodic table. There's F, and then there is D, and then there is P, and I'm going to change the timing on this slightly. 
I'll be right back. You'll never know I was gone. You see, you never knew I was gone. And then there's going to be S, and then there's a little S in the upper right-hand corner, you know, for helium. And then we're going to find, uh, so we, had, we know that it's 4S. Okay, we know that it's 4S. Now we're going to run this a little bit more quickly. Now what about the exponent when you say NLX? Well, what's the X? What is the exponent? Well, you see that the exponent is 1 because it's the first column of the periodic table, and it's the fourth row. So that becomes very simple to find that it is 4s1. Now, now, because we already know how to find the NLX before we even started quantum numbers, that should be a very routine pattern to see. So now what we do is we simply put in the correct quantum numbers in the chart. So the principal quantum number is 4 because it's the 4, the coefficient, so to speak, like 2x squared, 2 would be the coefficient. So the number coefficient is the principal quantum number. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put that in our little, our little plus chart. And so A, problem A, upper right would be 4. And now we know that uh, we know that the L is two is zero because L is zero for S, and then we know that uh, the magnetic quantum number, which we're going to see here, is going to be uh, is going to be uh, zero because S only has that one option zero, so it'll be zero, and then. In terms of the spin, the spin quantum number will be plus one because if it's going to be the first electron and only electron in the, in the orbital, that configuration is going to be plus one half because that's what we agreed upon. So those are your two options for the S uh, quantum number, plus one half and minus one half. So it will be... Uh, it will be plus one half. So the spin quantum number is plus one half. So now we're going to put that in, and then that's going to finish it for that particular problem. Now we'll go on to the next problem, B, and we'll do A, B, C, D, and then we'll go through them very quickly uh, for the example problems. So now what we'll do is we'll do problem B. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run for uh, three seconds per slide and things will become will come up very quickly. All right, now, uh, what we'll do is we will do NLX and then find the four quantum numbers. Okay, now, <clears throat> we know we could really do this quickly. We know that it's going to be 4, 0, 0 for the magnetic, and then negative 1 half. But we've got to do this out to make sure that we can reproduce this. So now I'm going to be quiet for the next three seconds per slide and see if you can find the answers. I'll go make myself a cup of coffee. I'll be right back.
All right, we're almost done. How did you do? Check your answers. Your final answer is coming up. And then we'll put it on pause. Okay, so it's six zero zero one half. How did you do? We'll do the next one, but I'll put it on a little quicker to see see what happens. All right, hold on. All right, here is C. Now I thought I did A, B, C, and D, but I only did A, B, and C. So we'll go through them very quickly, starting with D and going through J. So this one is going to be two or two seconds per slide. So hang on to your hats and let's get going. Okay, uh, we're going to find NLX first, and then the four quantum numbers. All right, let's begin. Okay, how did we do? Was M a little complicated? I don't know. Let, tell me how you did. Let me know if this was easy or not. You can always leave a comment in the YouTube site. Okay, finishing up now. And now we're going to start to do them very quickly. Okay, 3, 2, plus 2, and plus 1 half. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start with D and we're going to go straight to J very quickly.
Now, the first one is going to be D. I'm going to leave each slide at seven seconds and just let it run through, and I'm not even going to come back. So, what I want you to do is, if you have a problem, write down the letter that you're having a problem with, and then possibly which quantum number you're having a problem with. So each one, each answer is going to come up in the little chart with the yellow and blue circles very quickly. Well, not very quickly, seven seconds. So write down if you have a question. Okay, I'm going to let this run, and I'm going to have my coffee. I'll be back in, I don't know, ten minutes. Bye. So now comes the final phase of this challenging movie on quantum numbers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present a periodic table and we're going to do every quantum number in the periodic table. Now, it says the following worksheets consist of periodic tables and the four quantum numbers for all 118 elements. 
7P6. The 18 vertical columns and the 9 horizontal columns are divided into 36 columns and 18 rows. Each of the cells in each column beginning with the top left are uncovered one at a time, 3 seconds each. And that's going vertically down. So I'm going to uncover NM, principal magnetic, principal magnetic, principal magnetic, all the way down. And then I'll uncover LSLS all the way down. And so by the time I do two vertical passes, I will uncover all of the elements, all of the quantum numbers for those elements in that particular group. Okay? So let's begin right away. And I'm going to set it at a very quick pace. So it'll be like one second per, uh, let's say three seconds per each particular value. Okay? Let's begin. Not so fast. What I did was I reset the timing to four seconds for each slide. You'll see what I mean. If I went any more than that, then the movie would be just too long. But this way, it's a moderate length. It's an hour. And you can speed it up if you wish. But try to see a pattern in the um, uncovering of each individual uh, quantum number. So four seconds each per slide. And uh, now... We're ready to begin.
Okay, that wraps it up. Now, what we'll do is uh, you can ask me, you know, bring in questions that you may have on any individual problem, and then we'll go from there. So, hope you did well. Have a good day, and goodbye.